sales, 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 sales. Hey everybody, welcome back. That is the topic of today's video. And specifically, phone sales for retail florists and online florists. This is a challenge for some people and want to give you a little bit of a primer in a way of kind of a scripted layout that might be helpful for you and or your staff, especially going into the holiday season. Now, we are still in 2020 and we are still in this crazy season of pandemic and economic big question marks and sales for retail florists and online florists have been rather crazy this year. Depending on where you're at, you might be way above where you normally are at this time of year or in years past. Or you might be in an area where things are just really quiet and dead. But here or there, when it comes to online sales and for any retail florist, Nowadays, a good majority of your orders come through by means of your website. But as we all know, a lot of those sales still result from people calling you at your place of business. Very much so, I think people are, utilize our websites almost like we used to use phone books. So they might look at your website and get an idea as to what they want to send to somebody for a flower gift, but they still end up calling you and want to talk to an actual person to place the order. Now, with that in mind, how frequently do you have somebody call your business wanting to place an order and it's like they're almost angry before they even start giving you any information and you haven't even really started the conversation yet and they're very much kind of dictating to you what they're going to have. Now, if you think about kind of the backstory of where an online consumer's head is when they're wanting to place an order, especially for flower orders. I think we can really all agree that a good majority of the time when you get customers like that, why they're in that frame of mind to start with is because they've been burned before. We all know that there are a lot of customers out there who have gotten, I hate to say it, just crappy service from florists or online florists. So you're already kind of working against that. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a primer in how to kind of route <laughs> your phone sales so that you can actually increase your sales and potentially also increase your average sale dollar amount because it is possible and it's also possible to end up having a really loyal customer who will be a repeat customer for you on a regular basis. Now, if you are not comfortable on the phone, this is good for you. And if you have a retail flower shop where you have multiple employees, maybe you have some new employees, this would be a good video to have them watch because it can definitely help a lot. Number one, when a customer is calling you and wanting to place an order, you have to know from the get-go that anytime somebody's calling you, you have the ability to help them in some way, shape, or form. 
So, first off, when you answer the phone and you greet the person who's calling you, say thank you for calling whatever the name of your shop is, and then mention your first name and stop. Don't say anything more. Just say thanks, good morning, or good afternoon if you want to. The name of your shop and your first name. Do not finish by saying, can I help you? That, for me, is a really big pet peeve, <laughs> and it just rubs me the wrong way. Why I say that is because ultimately, if you could not help the person who is calling you in some way, they wouldn't be calling you in the first place. So just know from the get-go that you're going to be able to help them. So that's first. Let them respond. And once they do respond, again, you can tell them thanks for calling. If they don't happen to say what their name is, that's a good opportunity for you to ask them their name. And that way, especially if you are a longtime florist or you do have a lot of repeat customers and you utilize your computer system, that gives whoever is answering the phone an immediate name that they can use to start looking to see if this person has ordered before. So that's first. Hopefully, you can get your customer's first name. That's a really important key. If you can, that way, during the course of your conversation, when you're on the phone taking their order, be referring to them by their first name. That creates a real personal interaction and customers remember that. They feel like whoever they're talking to really cares about their order. So if it's at all possible to get a customer's first name, that's really helpful. And of course, you've let them know what your first name is. So that way, you can, again, at the end of the phone conversation, be letting them know again, just remember my name's Frank. That would be if I was answering the phone. If there's any problem with your order, don't hesitate to call the shop back and ask for me and we'll sort out whatever the problem is. But getting that personal connection with your customer on the phone is really important. From there, you can get into the nitty gritty about why they're calling and what they're wanting to place an order for. For starters, I would always suggest start with the name of the person the order is going to and their address and their phone number. If you don't want to get all of that, at least get their name and the purpose of why they are ordering flowers or whatever it is they're wanting to order. Find out what the occasion is. If it's a birthday or an anniversary or a sympathy order, to that effect, you kind of get the the rigmarole of going through placing and getting an online or phone order from a customer. From there, get the card message. Really important to get that card message early in the order because from a sales standpoint, that lets you know how important this order is. And that can be key because that can, for some customers, somewhat determine how much they want to spend on an order. So it kind of gives you a ballpark idea of maybe a dollar value to start with. From getting the customer, or I should say the recipient's name, and the occasion that the order is for, then it's really important to find out and actually ask your customer on the phone 
Have they ordered from you in the past? Are they familiar with your work? This is where you need to really sound like a person of authority. You're the professional. That's why they're calling you. You need to sound like a professional that knows what the heck they're talking about. And you're not going to steer them in a wrong direction. So, once you've gotten that clear, if they haven't ordered from you before, that's a good opportunity to let them know kind of price ranges for things. And you want to keep this kind of general. Don't get specific on specific varieties of flowers and that kind of thing. When it comes to sales of flowers, especially for online orders and orders over the phone for a retail florist, you want to keep your orders quite open-ended as to what the cust or the recipient is going to receive because you always want to make sure that you are selling what you actually have available to sell. Otherwise, you can run into the problem of ending up having to get more flowers and going back and forth to your wholesaler multiple times because every time you take an order, you're letting the customer dictate what they want. But you need to reverse that and leave it somewhat open-ended, but assure them what Ever they're going to get is going to be beautiful. Use descriptive words that are going to help them understand that and go from there. That way it enables you to use what you have on hand to fill the order. That's going to greatly help your overall cost of goods on a weekly and monthly basis. So, Backtracking. Once you know the purpose of the order and the occasion, and if they haven't ordered from you before, that's when you can kind of give them some bits of information that can give them a good mental and visual idea of the size of what they can get for certain dollar amounts. So, as an example, if your minimum delivery range starts right around anywhere from 35, if you start that low, to 45 or 50, for a lot of shops, that price point would be something small, suitable for a bedside table or a desktop. So if you see what I did there, I gave you the visual of a bedside table or a desktop. So that gives the person on the other end of the phone, your customer, a visual idea of how big of something they might get for whatever your price range is. From there, I usually suggest other pieces of furniture as a suggestion where something can look really good or an area of a home or a business. So you could say at this price point, we could do something really lush and lavish and it would look really good on a coffee table or a credenza. If something, if somebody wants something larger than that, and they might want something on the tall side, you can say at this price point, 150, 175 and up, we could do something that would look nice on a kitchen island or an entry table. Or it could even look good on a corporate office setting reception desk. Things like that, if you can give your customers visual cues and mental visual cues as to the size of what they're going to get, they're going to start understanding that in order to get something big, if that's what they're wanting, they're going to need to spend a certain dollar 
value in order to get what they really want. But you're also, in a way, giving the sale to them and letting them decide how much they want to spend. And from there, you can direct them as to the size and the type of arrangement they're going to get. From there, you can finish up with getting the card message if you haven't already gotten that information and the rest of their contact information. Now, going into the holidays and just in general, my big, big, big pet peeve with phone sales. And this is especially the case if you have a retail flower shop with multiple employees, some working some days, other employees working other days, so you've got different people in all the time. Phone number for the customer placing the order and phone number, good contact phone number for the recipient of the order. If your customer has any qualms whatsoever with giving out the recipient's phone number. That's where I suggest to people to reiterate to them, if you haven't already, to tell them why you need that phone number. Let them know that you're definitely not going to call them ahead of time and give them a heads up that they're getting a special delivery of some sort. But from a delivery standpoint, that number is really important because you have to think when a customer is calling you to place an order for flowers, their end all be all is to get the whole thing taken care of and delivered as quickly as possible. When we don't get the phone number for the recipient, that can actually cause the overall delay of the whole delivery process. If the person's not home and the weather's bad or inclement, so it's not like you can make a delivery and leave something on a porch or with a neighbor, etc. You've got to be able to call that recipient and at least leave them a message and say, hey, we have a special delivery for you. We're at your home right now and it looks like nobody's at home. If you can give us a call at your convenience and let us know when somebody would be available to receive this, that would be great. Or you can also let them know, we left your delivery for you on your front porch and your delivery person can give specific information as to where they're leaving it. Because in this day and age especially, so frequently people are going in and out the door into their house from their garage and they don't even use their front door. So that kind of gives you some reasoning that you can explain to your customer as to why you really need that phone number. Because if you as the shop owner or business owner or your employees have to mess with hearing back from the delivery driver of a problem and then you have to call the customer back and then if you can't reach the customer and you have to leave a message then the customer has to call you back and it just delays the whole thing that can actually cause a problem with delivery even being able to be accomplished. So that's why it's really important to get good, accurate phone number for both the recipient and the customer that you're getting the order from. And that's really important because sometimes you'll find and discover that maybe the recipient has moved and if it's to a residence that you are making the delivery to, the customer that placed the order with you might com be completely unaware that they've moved and they no longer live there. 
Maybe they live five blocks away. Maybe they live in a completely different town that is still in your delivery area, but it's still a different area. So little things like that can really help you be successful with taking a phone order. Now, dollar amounts. You can ask if there's anything else they might want to go with the flowers or maybe a plant, if it's a plant of some sort. A lot of places still sell balloons, but a lot of places don't anymore. But if it's for the right occasion, you can always inquire and ask if they would want a plush animal, if you have plush animals to offer, or a box of chocolates, or depending on where you are and depending on how your licensing works, potentially a bottle of wine or a bottle of champagne, etc. It all just kind of depends on the occasion that they're placing the order for. Hopefully though, that kind of gives you an general idea of the progression of a phone order for a retail flower shop. If you can kind of follow that, I think you will find that you have the ability to actually increase your average sale. And that's always a good thing because if you can get to the point where you're actually working smarter and not harder, maybe producing fewer orders, but your dollar amount is higher, that can be a really good thing for the bottom line of your flower business. So with that information, hopefully that's helpful for you and potentially your employees for taking phone orders, especially right now, this is good timing to be practicing these things and kind of your general script prior to getting into the holiday season. If you like this information and like this kind of content, definitely give me a thumbs up. And if you'd subscribe to the channel, that helps me know that you really like this kind of information. And I will definitely make a point of creating more content like this, specifically in these areas. If you'd like to get a notification when I do upload a new video, definitely hit that bell icon below. That way you'll get that little notification either on your phone or on your computer that I've uploaded a new video for you. And my upload days right now as it is are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So until next time, we will see you very soon. Stay well, everybody, and go get those sales. Bye for now.